beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them in all the scriptures what was referred to him. Timeless words, which spans two millennia of salvation history. And they are addressed to us today. To the faithful that receive from Jesus, here descended, in spirit and truth, the deep understanding of what was, so that all would be fulfilled, that the children of God, here they live, and always more they will live, so that the truth that is Christ could be revealed fully. And we understand well what those disciples felt when they said to each other, Did not our hearts burn in our chests as he conversed with us along the way? When he explained the scriptures to us, our hearts burn in the same way our heart. When we receive the word of God, holy nourishment, living bread descended from heaven. As descended from heaven, Jesus, who makes alive and present everything that the Lord explains and reveals to us of the sacred scriptures through the effusion of his Holy Spirit. The disciples of Emmaus did not realize that while the Nazarene explained the sacred scripture to them so that they would know the story of redemption that advances over time. They at that very moment became part of that great mystery of love of that same sacred scripture that the risen one with loving patience said to them. And we today have full awareness of what we live as disciples, as learners of the master Jesus. Here in the true church of Christ, it is said at the beginning of this encounter, their eyes were not able to recognize him, but instead it was their heart, burning with divine love, which allowed them to understand the priceless grace that they found themselves living. Likewise, we today are always able, we are always capable of recognizing Jesus in the only way in which it is possible to do it, and that is by responding to love with love. We are capable of recognizing him in everyday life. There where the real and good battle for holiness is fought, we are able to recognize him when the temptation of discouragement and despondency and daily afflictions seem to besiege us from all sides. And especially, we are capable to recognize Jesus in the brother or in the sister, despite his flaws, despite his shortcomings, from which even we certainly are not exempt. Jesus reminds us in the Catechesis, the brothers who come to honor my cradle are not quite as one expects them to be. This doesn't just apply to others, but also, first and foremost, for ourselves. So then, if the answer that comes not only from our lips, but above all, from our heart, from a heart in love of God, then yes, the Lord says, must change the quality of participation to the divine plan. It must change. There isn't an option. There is no alternative. It is not possible to do without this. It must change. No less than how the quality of participation in the divine plan of the disciples of Emmaus. Because on their way, they met God, which, as written, he approached and walked with them. Who lives the reality of paradise present in this blessed land, has experience of this, not theory, but practice of Christian life. Because Jesus here has approached Christians to those who belong to him, Christian of Christ, and walks with them every day, never leaving them alone, because Jesus never abandons his children, and he accompanies them on the itinerary of salvation to which he called them in this apostolate of special election. That's why he invites us to abandon personal selfishness, human reasoning, and complaints of the heart. Leave them to the old man, to make room for the new man, reborn in spirit, truth, and life. The brothers of Jerusalem must be different from those who live the life of the world, without jealousy, rivalries, resentments, because what's at stake is the highest of all. And if we don't want to deny, without any ifs or buts, our ego, sooner or later, we will find ourselves denying God, as reported by the evangelist Luke. If anyone wants to come after me, let him deny himself. Let him take up his cross every day and follow me. Unequivocal words, which cannot be misunderstood in any way. The only possible way to place oneself in the following of Christ is to save one's soul. 
The disciples of Emmaus turned to the master, saying, Stay with us, for evening is coming, and the day is already drawing to a close. The day of this creation, corrupted by original sin, is approaching its decline, to its end. But on this evening of the world, Jesus stayed with his own. I am with you until the end of the world, he said, to illuminate the path of faith from this white island, from this beacon of light, and lead to safety. To this safe harbor, his children, landing that is already in the heart of the Father, and in the sanctuary of divine mercy, celebrates our Lord, the last mass. The mass that Jesus lives with his, at the end of this narrative, at the end of history, when he was at table with them, he said the blessing. He took the bread, broke it, and gave it to them. And after these gestures, which recall the Eucharist, the blessed sacrament, he disappeared from their sight. Evoking the last times, this time, in which the Christ would have become nourishment for his children through the bestowal of the Spirit, through spiritual communion. That is, of the Eucharist, which as spiritual is no longer visible with the eyes, but is lived in the heart. Thanks to the prayer that the Father listens to, and in his infinite mercy, he grants, send your Spirit to sanctify our hearts, so that they can welcome Christ, living bread descended from heaven. Cherish him, and make him dwell in them, for eternity. And to you, dear young people, children of he who is risen, I say, go and testify to the world that God is mercy, but is also justice. Tell everyone that this house, this church, is the center of the Father's mercy, where the Son, I.S., be ardent and living witnesses of all the love that you live and experience in the new Jerusalem. And like children of Mary, go and distribute to all, generously, unsparingly, and the good and holy Father, who all sees, will reward you eternally. Blessed are we all, who have believed in he who descended from heaven to gather his flock under the only shepherd. Blessed are we that have recognized him, and with sincere heart and unison we proclaim, my Lord and my God. Brethren of the true man and children of the true God, at the end of this, our earthly journey, just as at the end of this gospel page, we will meet at the table with Jesus, guests of honor, to the banquet of the King of Kings. And this is worth any sacrifice and any renunciation, because there will wait for us the Trinitarian love, together with the Mother, Most Holy Mary, who will hold us close to her heart, for an embrace that will never end. And so be it.